to talk to you guys about how you're kind of training yourself to fail. Now, first thing is I would be worried if an instructor told me, hey, hang on, it's going to be like drinking from a fire hose today. That's not good because guess what? The brain is very limited on what it can actually learn physically. And what we're doing in a firearms course is learning physically. You're going to have some rote memorization to do if you're actually wanting to memorize stuff, stuff like nomenclature, the safety rules, verbatim, blah, 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 blah. So, anyways, um, the physical skills, uh, it, we can only learn a few a day, maybe, and it's only really components of that. Now, you can focus down on one thing at a time, and most courses are not going to be like, uh, you know, a martial arts uh, dojo or whatever. Like, you're, there, as far as I know, there is no, like, membership to, like, a gun training facility where it's treated like a dojo like you come in every other day and we learn something new and we just practice for hours like you do with martial arts it's not like that and unfortunately so because just like martial arts it requires precision thinking and attention to detail and it is perishable so <clears throat> with that said we're basically shooting ourselves in the foot. Can you imagine somebody basically giving you like an eight-hour seminar on, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and it's like, well, I'm now able to defend myself for the rest of my life. Cool. That doesn't work, does it? Any of you who know, you know. So, firearms are no different. So, the first thing we're going to talk about is reloads. And I can, I can go on about a lot of different things here where we're training to fail, but, you know, I'll refer you to my blog. So, anyways, reloads. So, there's two different types of reloads. I'm specifically talking about the emergency reload. It's becoming more common where the instructor will say, you know, reload when you want to, like top off when you want to, which is basically just in the magazine exchange. When you have time, just top off when you can. That's pretty functional. You know, it keeps you aware of what's going on. Oh, I've shot enough rounds where I might want to just go ahead and top off. That's pretty functional. The emergency reload drill that is very common is shoot one round, reload, and shoot another round. Now, a few things are going wrong there. Number one, you're standing still. Can that really be helped in a classroom? Yes, it can actually be helped. You can actually have a cardboard partition between you and the, uh, the target. You can have a barrel between you and the target. You can actually practice, okay, uh, this is going on, I've got to take cover. Uh, so, instead of imitating the target that you're practicing on and therefore thinking that that's the way to master that skill, you might want to, based on context of what you're trying to defend yourself against, you might want to seek cover. And next is, did you notice I stared at the imaginary gun I was reloading? That is very common. A lot of people will stare at their gun. There's no reason to do that. You can find the magazine well. So, anyways, what are you going to do in the dark? Okay, so you're probably not going to flash your flashlight on and be like, oh, well, oh. Uh. So, anyways, uh, the next thing is they just, you just fire. There's no assessment. You know, and the one thing that they've done pretty well at these days is uh, usually it, it's now tap rack assess instead of tap rack bang uh, for malfunctions. So, tap, rack assess because by the time that malfunction is cleared the threat might have taken rounds but they also might have moved they might have you know stopped and retreated therefore there's no reason to shoot again is there there might have been a situation change there might be a civilian in the way now so why would reloads be any different okay so the next is speed and precision shooting so there's there are two different things so, in some cases, you'll have people that will go to courses to learn how to shoot incredibly fast. And they'll be like, well, you need to know how to shoot incredibly fast. No, I don't. So, the other one is precision, like taking people who are completely new and trying to turn them into some kind of like three, seven yard sniper or whatever with a pistol where they can like do a hole in one. The hole in one drill, right? Um, that's stupid too. Uh, you know what makes sense in a real world? acceptable accuracy because what counts hits did perfect hits always count sure but how long did it take you to do that okay 
So a lot of times you're fighting against time. And when it, when it comes to new shooters, I always prefer to teach them speed. And speed per context. And the context here is you're not out shooting your OODA loop. Okay? You should not be shooting so fast that if you're shooting at a, a steel target that falls after being shot a certain amount of rounds, that you actually send rounds over after the steel target has fallen. You're reacting to the target. Does it deserve another round? Did you miss? You should not be shooting faster than your OODA loop can process the information. Okay? All right. So precision. Uh, how often are you going to have to take really precise shots? Well, some people are like, well, my kids are taken hostage. Um, that sounds like an inside job to me, like somebody's just going to take your kid and hold, him, hold them hostage, and then daddy comes to the rescue and plugs them, uh, you know, in the face or whatever. Uh, I could see that, but at what distance are you doing that from? And maybe you will be fine with just learning how to shoot as fast as you can accurately. Because I'm telling you, this is actually a generous sized target. You know, if you learn how to shoot competently with speed, you can slow it down for a second. And you'll be used to the recoil enough to where it's not going to be a big deal to slow down and go, okay, Bob, boom. Just saying. Now, is that legal? You can tell an attorney for your local area. I'm not an attorney, and I'm not here to give you advice on that. So the last one is context. So each state is going to be different, isn't it? Each state is going to be a little bit different. Florida may have their standard ground law, but the guy who shot this guy who just pushed him over and wasn't even advancing on him, he's in jail right now. Hmm, context, right? Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse spent a couple of years in jail just to figure out that he was already justified despite the fact that it was all over the news because court of public opinion had more of an influence than the actual law itself and he still had to go through that dog and pony show. So there needs to be context in our training for the situation that you're actually trying to prepare yourself for. Now, when you give somebody a gun and you teach them that it can solve all these problems or whatever, how they use it fast with no context, what happens? Everything becomes a nail. I'm, I'm afraid that everything becomes a nail. It does. Because a lot of people will try to almost find an excuse to employ their gun. It's like, well, if I see this or that, I'm going to intervene and I'm going to show off my skills that I just learned at this class. Like, that's probably not good. You're just going to be end up coming another statistic and another reason that we face another year of confiscation threats. So, anyways, uh, we need to stop training to fail. Maybe you need to start learning about the laws. Maybe your instructors need to start teaching about the local laws or at least have a lawyer on retainer to come in there for like 10 minutes and just discuss the use of a firearm in self-defense and answer a couple questions. Wouldn't that be cool? Just saying. Or maybe you could go out of your way, get a UC, USCCA membership, not that I'm being like sponsored by him, but get something of that sort and get some education. Consult an attorney. Actually learn the laws. And maybe you can actually learn that some of the stuff that you're being taught actually is going to set you up for failure and probably put you in prison. But other than that, I have no opinion. Thanks a lot for watching, and you guys have a good one.